subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button people have to live in in unity we are still in transition civil society has been decimated of course we rely on media and i think the government has not done enough the international community has failed to respond no place in the world is perfect the yoga event is held here severe injustice and they should be stopped we should raise our voices condemn this uh, brutal act Hello viewers I am your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus Let's begin the show While a lot has developed around and post Galwan face off the revelation of Chinese duplicity and its repeated lies on Galwan Valley have established one fact that its intentions are deep and diabolic in nature Analysts across think tanks of various countries and civil society believe that Chinese actions have emerged out of its inherent insecurities against any nation that has the potential to challenge it at any front. Chinese ambitions of securing hegemony over trade across the globe have suffered an apparent obstruction due to strengthening Indian soft power and forging of alliances that are fundamentally against the Chinese model of gaining more economic, strategic and military control. Fresh satellite imagery provided by US space technology company Mexer Technologies has exposed Chinese claims and lies on Galwan Valley. People's Liberation Army, which has expressed reservations over Indian construction in its sovereign territory and unethically attacked its army personnel for the same, has deployed heavy military and construction machinery along the border. There are camps and earth moving equipments which are in immediate vicinity of the patrolling point where the fist fight between two sides had broken out on 15th June. Experts across the forum say that lies and deceit are a fundamental part of the pattern emerging from Beijing in its dealings with other countries. The communist China they say is insecure about new alliances with different and inclusive ideologies shaping up across the globe. Chinese belligerence against India at LAC is totally related to that. Experts say India should double down on its strategy to ensure its better bilateral and multilateral relations. the quad is uh, is something that china uh, is is worried and concerned about especially because now uh, we are talking about quad plus which includes asean um, and even many of the european countries like france and sort of you know and germany are playing a bigger role so you may have more democracies uh, which have military and maritime presence in the region second uh, india has been speaking about including Mal uh, australia and the malabar military exercises Uh, in addition to Japan, so it would be a kind of a quad military exercise, even if not under quad, and that would send a message to Beijing. Finally, um, India, sort of, sort of, you know, as part of the Indian Ocean, Indo-Pacific, and quad strategies, maybe India could also finally boost its Andaman-Nicobar command um, because that lies straight on the Malacca Straits, and that will have an impact on how China. Sort of views in the Pacific, so I think there's a lot India can do. Indian diplomacy in last few years has also proven to be a cause of concern for Chinese, as New Delhi has found more allies than China in recent history. While China's relations with most of the countries are based on unilateral control of the ties. India has moved ahead 
with equal share of both responsibilities and dividends. In a COVID-19 world, which we're currently in, where Chinese actions are increasingly being called out in all parts of the world, uh, India will win more friends and sympathy than will Beijing if these actions are called out. Finally, it's heartening that India is invited to attend the G7 summit later this year by uh, President Trump. Uh, my suggestion is India should make a show of being a natural maritime and continental counterpoint uh, to the values and the policies of China in the region. China was also spooked by Indian political decisions in Kashmir, where it bifurcated the state into two union territories. Indian Home Minister had reiterated New Delhi's commitment of relentless endeavours towards regaining the territory it has lost to Pakistan and China since independence. China had even towed the Pakistani line of raking up Kashmir issue in the United Nations. China fears if India manages to get back its land from Pakistan, then its flagship China-Pakistan economic corridor will die a sudden death. Moving on. Even after the resumption of the economic activities in Bangladesh, the country's troubles are far from over. The overall growth rate, which was already struggling before the outbreak of the virus and was further battered by it, is not witnessing any signs of recovery. The forecasts of around 8% growth rate this year have come down to just fractions over 1% and that too because of its cheap labour force and not due to any major government reform. The crisis has further been compounded by tens of thousands losing their jobs in the past couple of months. Have a look. Demonstrations against the government is a recurring picture in Bangladesh these days. Factory workers, labourers and employees from almost every industry who were affected due to the lockdown are asking for the salaries they were not paid. The workers of Bangladesh's largest and reputed garment industry have suffered a double whammy. While most of them were not paid a penny during the closure of factories, others have been laid off citing losses. They are now carrying out protests against the government demanding the payment and jobs. Carrying banners and shouting slogans, a number of them gathered in front of the Labour Ministry with former employees of the Windy Group, one of the largest garment industry group in the country, calling for a token hunger strike. The Windy Group, which supplies international clothing brands such as Zara, H&M and Primark with products, laid off 3,000 staffs from their factories recently. When the group take, took the decision to retrench these 3,000 workers of this group, this group actually the supplier of Zara, H&M and Primark. So we are demanding reinstate these 3,000 workers with their back salary and to stop union busting in the Windy Group. Bangladesh has around 4,000 clothing factories which employ about 4 million people. Garment exports fell by 84% in the first half of April as $3 billion worth of orders were cancelled or suspended due to global store closures, according to factory owners. The number of new orders have also decreased. According to a government report, at least 17,000 garment workers have lost their jobs since orders started being cancelled in March this year. Some respite came in the form of resumption of trade along countries one of the major trading partners, India, where the trucks with stones and goods were seen crossing border a few days back. क्योंकि आज हमारा बॉर्डर ओपन हुआ लॉकडाउन का अंदर में पूरा बंद था 
उसमें बहुत मतलब आर्थिक क्षति हुआ Bangladesh is a relatively poor country with a high density of population while a large number of people are unemployed in the country others survive on meager salaries According to a study more than 100 million people in Bangladesh are at a high risk of economic and health vulnerabilities and out of these over 53 million people are extremely poor their earning per day is below 2 dollars according to the south asian network of economic modeling bangladesh's poverty rate may double to 40.9% from that prior to the onset of the pandemic the pandemic has also hit the other main source of bangladesh's external earnings remittances in march they dropped by 12% and in april by 25% estimates suggest that over 1.4 million migrant workers have either returned or are on their way back home due to job losses moving on India is taking huge strides to minimize the repercussions of the novel coronavirus that has wreaked havoc in the country be the central or the state government local administrations or the citizens everyone is busy finding out ways to help the country tackle with the implications of the deadly virus so today let's take a look at the recent steps taken by the government to deal with challenges around covid-19 along with catching a glimpse of the stories of a few samaritans who have gone an extra mile in their effort to curb the virus spread coronavirus has posed a number of challenges before the society the biggest one being improving the livelihood opportunities of the migrant workers who have returned back to their home states during the lockdown period as a solution to it prime minister narendra modi recently launched a scheme garib kalyan rozgar abhiyan or poor development employment campaign through video conferencing in new delhi the 125 day campaign will involve intensified and focused implementation of 25 different types of works to provide employment to migrant workers on one hand and create infrastructure in the rural areas of the region on other with a resource envelope of approximately 6613 million dollars hamara prayas hai ki is abhiyan ke zariye shramikon aur kamgaron ko ghar ke paas hi kaam diya jaye abhi tak aap apne hunar और मेहनत से शहरों को आगे बढ़ा रहे थे शहरों को चमका रहे थे शहरों का भला कर रहे थे अब अपने गांव को अपने इलाके को आगे बढ़ाएंगे While the central government is busy dealing with the menace caused due to the virus, the state governments too are trying their level best in a bid to race against the fast-spreading coronavirus. In one such effort, the government of Delhi has turned the luxury hotels into isolation facilities for positive patients. the step has been taken in order to deal with the shortage in the number of beds due to a surge in the corona virus cases isme sabko saath aane ki zarurat hai sabhi jo jo apni taraf se jo contribute kar sakta hai to main ummeed karta hu ki ye do teen din mein shuru ho jayega pehle 120 bed shuru honge uske baad isko ramp up karke 250 300 beds tak le jaya jayega isi tarah se puri delhi ke andar 30 35 hotels और इसमें साथ देंगे और हमें उम्मीद है तीन साढ़े तीन हज़ार बेड्स हम होटल्स में तैयार कर पाएंगे इवन आफ्टर द रैपिड इंक्रीज इन द नंबर ऑफ केसेस इन इंडिया बोथ इट्स गवर्नमेंट एंड सिटीजन आर अंडरटर्ड इन देर एफर्ट्स टू कीप करोना एट बे 
Moreover, in the latest development, one of India's company, Patanjali Ayurveda Limited, that deals with Ayurveda, the ancient medicine system of the country, has made a sensational claim to have developed the first Ayurvedic medicine against the coronavirus. Named as Coronil and Swasari, the medicines are prepared by the combined efforts of Patanjali Research Centre and National Institute of Medical Sciences and Research, which is based in Rajasthan. Though the verification is yet to be done, but the company has claimed that the medicines have shown 100% favourable results during clinical trials on affected patients. Moving on, the illegally occupied region of Gilgit Baltistan has been severely affected by the growing menace of the pandemic. However, the administration which historically remained indifferent to the plights of the region's people has not changed even amidst a pandemic. They have continuously meted out a discriminatory treatment to these people. A protest was recently carried out against such treatment by doctors. They demanded the essential medical equipments and urged the administration to set up an exclusive COVID center in the region. Doctors treating COVID-19 patients demonstrated in front of Chief Minister Residential Compound in Gilgit to seek immediate redressal of a host of problems they are enduring. Safety equipment while treating COVID-19 patients and security from all kinds of violence against healthcare staff are two key demands. While a large number of them have contracted the virus in the past few weeks, owing to the absence of proper safety gear while attending patients, a whole lot of others have been targeted by an unruly mob for various reasons. इस वक्त आपको मैं ये ये यकीन दिलाता हूँ हमारी बहुत सारी लेडी डॉक्टर्स मेल डॉक्टर्स हमारे पीएमए के खुद प्रेसिडेंट डॉक्टर एकबाल और बहुत सारे सर्जन इस वक्त कोविड के पेशेंट हो चुके हुए हैं ऑलरेडी और कुछ अंडर ट्रीटमेंट हैं इस वक्त लिहाजा हम ये गुजारिश करते हैं कि इन सब को प्रोटेक्टिव किट्स आला क्वालिटी के वाफिर मकदार में मुहैया किए जाए सर्विस सिक्योरिटी हमारी जो है नहीं है आए रोज जाहिर है किसी पेशेंट का अटेंडेंट आता है उसका ट्रीटमेंट किसी तरीके से नहीं होता है या इग्नोरेंस की वजह से कहीं डिले कहीं कोई ऐसी बात होती है तो अग्रेसिव हो जाते हैं और डॉक्टर्स को पैरामेडिक्स को स्टाफ को तशद करके चले जाते हैं ये रोज अव्वल से हम यही डिमांड करते रहे हैं कि हमें सिक्योरिटी हॉस्पिटल के बेस्ड मिलिट्री फोर्स पैरामिलिट्री फोर्स स्ट्रांगली बेस्ड की जाए ताकि हम स्मूथली Gilgit Baltistan had reported first clusters of coronavirus as early as March after a number of pilgrims who had returned from Iran were found positive. But the authorities, who have forever acted carelessly in matters of this illegally occupied region, didn't bother to address even this grave health crisis. Such is the situation today that one cannot tell the real count of patients as most of them have not received any medical attention. Doctors are also demanding an exclusive COVID-19 hospital and an isolation centre in the region as they say the current capacity of hospitals has been overwhelmed by the rapid rise in count of patients with the virus. This is the situation, the current situation. We demand that the government of the government and the government of 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 the government पूरे मुल्क में कोरोना पेशेंट के एक आइसोलेशन सेंटर और एक अलग हॉस्पिटल का क्या मामूल में लाया गया है लिहाजा हम गुजारिश करते हैं कि फिल फोर एक अरसे हम इसी एहतजाज में हैं कि कोरोना के पेशेंट्स के लिए सस्पेक्ट्स के लिए एक्टिव पेशेंट्स के लिए एक अलग हॉस्पिटल का क्या अमल में लाया जाए जो कि इस वक्त की बहुत बड़ी नीड है If the coronavirus has brought hard times for common people, the first phase seems to have descended upon the doctors of the region. It is not just the unavailability of the equipment they are fighting, but the regional authorities, who hold little or no sway in higher political circles, have been harassing them with threats of transfers and expulsions. Moving on to Afghanistan, where the government has employed 40,000 people who got unemployed during the coronavirus lockdown to dig trenches on the outskirts of capital Kabul. While conserving water in the region, where it is depleting fast, has been the key objective of the government. It also aims to provide relief to those who are at the lowest rung of the economic ladder of the society and have been hit hard due to the lockdown. 
As per the experts, a high unemployment rate in country is going to surge further with coronavirus rattling an already slow-moving economy of the war-torn country. A cook by profession, 28 years old Zakir Hussain Zahiri, who was making a good living until Afghanistan went into coronavirus lockdown, now digs a series of trenches on a mountain in the outskirts of capital Kabul, aimed at saving the city from a water crisis while earning money to afford him family's daily needs. As lockdown measures imposed amid the coronavirus outbreak have taken a toll on Afghanistan's workforce, the government is employing more than 40,000 jobless workers to rehabilitate groundwater supplies for fast-growing capital city of Kabul. The project, run by the state's National Development Corporation, uses trenches to capture rainwater and snowmelt that is usually lost through flash flooding. I was in the hospital and I was in the city of Kabul. And then, when the corona virus came to the Kabul, we were in the city of Kabul. We were in the city of Kabul. We were in the hospital. But we came to the city of Kabul. We were in the city of Kabul. We were in the city of Kabul. A study published in May by the Afghanistan Research and Evaluation Unit, an independent think tank, calculated that the city's groundwater levels had decreased by about one meter per year over the past two decades. Some parts of central Kabul have seen drops of as much as 30 meters over 14 years, the study said. Planned to run for at least a year, the 155 million US dollars Kabul water project pays laborers at least 3.90 US dollars a day to dig close to 150,000 trenches along with 17 small dams and spillways on the outskirts of the mountainous Afghan capital. The Hadaf Kuli Puruja Awal Khuyaski Ami Abhai Sathi Barana Mamudiriat Kunim Dakuha. و دیگه دامی خود آب که دکو مدیریت میکنیم ما که امی ترنچ یا باکس کندیم دامی خود هر باکس یک درخت میشانیم که امی آب ده خود باکس ذخیره کدیم از اونم آب ذخیره شده آب با خود درخت استفاده میشه و دیگه با خاطر امی که زیاد مردم ما ده کابل بیکار شدن با خاطر امی مردم بیکار که امی رزق حلال خود پیدا کنه همدان هم ده اینجا سرکار شدن امی رزق حلال خودم پیدا میکنه ده زمین که رزق حلال خود فایده میکنه با وطن خود هم کار کرد خدمت کرد و وطن خودم جور میکنه People like Zahiri who have large families were severely hit during the lockdown as their businesses paused and earnings dried out Now with government providing them an opportunity they are able to organize a square meal for themselves and their family. Afghanistan has joined a growing group of countries that are turning to green stimulus projects to address two urgent challenges at once, keeping the economy running through the pandemic and tackling climate change. Kabul's groundwater supplies, its primary source of drinking water, have been overexploited, putting the city of up to 7 million people at risk of severe shortages, warn water experts. 
The Afghan establishment has found it extremely hard to generate employment in an atmosphere that has been dominated by Taliban attacks and violence. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.